Hello everyone. I welcome you all to the next session of chapter 1 on fluid mechanics. So the objective today is to understand the concept of surface tension and capillarity. So first of all surface tension you might have observed that the liquid droplets require spherical shape and before discussing surface tension it is important to understand what is cohesion and adhesion and you might be aware of that the forces which are between like molecules are responsible for cohesion and we call them as the cohesive forces and the forces which are between the unlike molecules are called as uh, adhesive forces and they are responsible for adhesion so the liquids liquid droplets acquire the spherical shape because of the cohesive forces and due to which a tensile effect is created on their surface so this tensile effect or the pulling effect which is created due to cohesion between the like molecules allows the liquid to acquire the spherical shape and if we take into consideration a beaker in which a liquid is poured you will feel that these forces tensile forces will act in a direction parallel to the direction of the liquid surface so as i told you that these forces cohesive forces allows a substance to behave as a single body so in order to create a surface since we know that uh, if 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 the liquid bu bubble is forming or liquid droplet is forming or the surface is being created so uh, surface tension effects will be there and in order to create a surface or in order to increase the area of an existing surface some work is required to be done so physically that work gets stored in the form of energy on the surface and we call that energy as a surface energy and we also know that the surface comprising of that energy is under the tensile effect so that energy is also called as the surface tension so therefore we also call the surface energy as the surface tension the magnitude of the tensile force which is acting on the per unit length of the fluid element is called as the surface tension or the coefficient of surface tension so basically uh, surface tension is uh, nothing but it is it can be regarded as a form of energy which is required to create a unit area or which are which is required to increase the area of an existing surface how that we will uh, we will talk in the next slide so before that we know uh, we need to understand that without a surface there will be no surface tension surface tension is a binary property that it is a property of a gas as well as a liquid there are few examples of surface tension uh, you can see that the energy of the surface allows the insects to walk on the water because there is some tensile effect on the surface so due to which insects do not submerge in water then you might have observed an example of floating needle then dew drops which attain spherical shape or soap bubble which attain the spherical shape so in order to understand uh, how that work the work which is required to be done to create a surface uh, will be used to calculate the surface tension that we will do. so if we have to calculate uh, the surface tension so as i told you in the previous slide that it is basically the work which is required to be done in order to create or in order to increase the area of an existing surface so suppose we have a surface and the initial area of the surface is a so if we want to create increase the area of the surface the work is required to be done so that work will be 
calculate it from here so if we apply some uh, force it, it, it is basically tensile force which is required to create we are not applying basically uh, in order to create increase the area of the surface a tensile effect is being created so this force is there which which is acting and it is trying to increase this area and this incre increase in area is equals to uh, this l into delta s so this is the increased area so uh, the force uh, this force is responsible for this increased area so the work done the stretching work done uh, which is required to be done is given by force into distance force into distance divided by the area that is l into delta s so this is basically the work per unit area so work which is required to be done for a unit area will give us a phase tension so f into delta s divided by l into delta s so we'll have uh, the surface tension or the work done per unit area is force divided by length so its unit is newton per meter so this is basically the surface tension so if we have to calculate the pressure inside a liquid droplet so we will have to consider a liquid droplet which is divided into two halves so we are showing one half of over here so what we can see that that there will be a tensile effect because it it is the we are only showing the half of the liquid part so we can say on the periphery of this we will have a tensile effect due to which it is it has obtained a spherical shape so this tensile effect we call it as a surface tension so surface tension will act on the periphery of this or along the circumference of this circle so also we know that uh, that it is under the equilibrium condition a spherical drop is there which is under the equilibrium condition so there will be another force which will be acting on the acting on this internal area that is basically the pressure force or difference in pressure because we have the pressure outside we call it as atmospheric pressure and there will be pressure inside the liquid droplet we will call it as inside pressure so inside pressure outside pressure so inside pressure will always be greater than greater than the outside pressure so the net pressure will be delta p which is basically acting on this surface and this delta p is equals to internal pressure minus outside pressure or atmospheric pressure so since the droplet is there it is in the equilibrium conditions so under equilibrium conditions these two forces these two effects will be the summation of these effects will be zero or these two effects will be equal to each other so delta p the effect due to delta p due to the pressure difference will be equal to the effect due to the surface tension so under equilibrium conditions force which will be developed due to this uh, pressure is p inside minus p outside divided in multiplied by pi by 4 d, d square which is basically the area of this uh, circle so it will be equals to surface tension force and it is equals to sigma pi into d sigma is basically the surface tension force which is acting over on the periphery and pi d is basically the length on which it is acting and pi d basically the circumference of this circle okay so under equilibrium conditions these two effects will be equal so if we will equate p these two effects pi minus p naught into pi by 4 d square is equal to sigma pi to d and on on simplifying we will find that the pressure inside is equal to 4 times sigma divided by the diameter of the liquid droplet so or you can say that the difference in pressure delta p because delta p is what it is uh, pi minus p naught so pi minus p naught will be equals to 4 sigma by d so if you want to find out the pressure inside the liquid droplet we can use this formula if the diameter and if the surface tension force is known to us so similarly for another application that is pressure inside a soap bubble so you can see a soap bubble basically soap bubble has two layers inner and outer layer soap bubble is basically hollow whereas a liquid droplet is not hollow it is in the solid it is in the liquid form so the hollow soap bubble because soap uh, bubble will be hollow so there will be two surfaces one is 
external surface and there will be another surface called as the internal surface so since we have two surfaces over here so which means the surface tension will act on the, these two surfaces because surface tension always acts on the surface here we had the one surface so surface tension was on the outer periphery on the outer surface whereas whereas we have here inside surface and outside surface so we have sigma inside and sigma outside so this these two these sigmas will be basically will be twice two surface tension effects and the pressure will remain same because uh, the thickness of this uh, film or the soap film is very less it is negligible so uh, so we can consider that the delta p pressure which is acting on the central area on this area will be equals to twice of uh, will be equals to the effect caused by this surface tension force so here we will have the same kind of equation force due to uh, due to pressure will be given by this one pi by 4 d square because d over here is the diameter of this and diameter of this so as i told you thickness is very less so uh, diameter will almost be same so surface tension force will be twice basically it is 2 pi 2 sigma pi d pi d is the circumference so as the thickness is very less so the circumference will remain same for internal uh, layer and for the outer layer so it is twice of sigma so if we will equate this we will find out that the pressure inside the soap bubble is 8 sigma times pi d plus pressure outside or we can say it is pi minus p naught is equal to 8 sigma by d so here we have two surfaces so there were there that's why it was two sigma here we have only one surface it is only sigma so this is basically the application of a surface tension uh, in order to calculate the pressure inside a liquid droplet and pressure inside a soap bubble we can have other applications of surface tension also. so uh, the next is capillarity you might have observed whenever we insert a small diameter tube uh, in a liquid it may be water or it may be kerosene so there may be a rise in the liquid level so this action is basically called as the capillary action so basically the rise and fall of a liquid level when a small diameter tube is inserted in a container containing that liquid is called as a capillary rise or capillary fall so the effect produced upon the insertion of that tube is called as the capillary effect so this kind of fall effect is basically uh, produced with the tubes of the smaller diameter so these tubes of the smaller diameter are called as the capillary capillaries so important term is the contact angle uh, in case of a capillarity it is basically the angle made by the tangent drawn to the liquid surface with the vertical surface of the capillary at the point of contact uh, that uh, contact angle we will be able to understand in the next slide properly what is this so for the timing the contact angle between a mercury and the glass surface is 130 degrees and for kerosene and a glass is 26 degrees this uh, contact angle is also affected by the surface impurities and surface properties so we can say capillary action is basically both due to cohesion and addition so whenever there will be cohesion the as you know cohesion is basically due to the uh, due to the force of attraction between the like molecules and whenever there is a cohesion there will be capillary fall and whenever there will be addition addition you know it is the force between the two unlike molecules so whenever there is a addition there is a capillary rise that's why the liquid will tend to rise in a capillary tube we have two kinds of a fluids called, called as a wetting fluids and non wetting fluids wetting fluids are basically responsible for capillary rise in these uh, fluids adhesion is basically more than uh, cohesion that's why they tend to uh, that that's why the fluid tends to rise and tries to stick to the surface of the capillary tube in that case the contact angle is acute that is that is it is less than 90 degrees 
the uh, about contact angle we will discuss uh, in the next slide in case of wetting fluids meniscus is concave in shape the common example is water so non wetting fluids basically are responsible for capillary fall and the cohesion forces or cohesive action is more dominant in comparison to, to the adhesion and the contact angle is obtuse that is it is greater than 90 degree the common example is mercury and the meniscus in case of a non wetting fluid is convex in shape but uh, the important point over here is that the capillary rise is or fall is independent of the shape of the capillary tube it may be s shaped it may be curved one that, and that capillary rise is basically so in order to understand the contact angle and capillary rise uh, we will consider a figure over here here you can see that there is some capillary rise and it is a liquid A and we will call it as a wetting liquid basically and in that case the adhesion forces are great more dominant than the cohesive forces due to which it, this liquid level is trying to stick to this the liquid is trying to stick to this tube and that's why there is a rise and it is a case of wetting fluid and the wetting fluid has a common example as a water so in that case the rise is taking place the meniscus is also in convex, uh, convex shaped and this phi is the contact angle and as uh, previously defined that the contact angle is the angle between the tangent tangent drawn to the liquid level this is a tangent drawn to the liquid level and an angle between the tangent drawn to the liquid level and the vertical surface this is a vertical surface of the tube at the point of contact so this is a point of contact so the angle between the tangent and the vertical surface of the liquid uh, vertical surface of this tube is, is is will give us the contact angle so here you can see that the contact angle is less than 90 degree so it is a case of a wetting fluid so the contact angle is nine less than 90 degree in case of the wetting fluids in the other case we have a non wetting fluid in cohesive forces will be more dominant than the adhesive forces so there will be a fall it will be responsible for the capillary fall the common example is mercury and you can say the meniscus is concave shaped and the angle the contact angle if you will draw the tangent over here it you will extend it and you will see the vertical the um, surface vertical surface towards this direction the angle between that will be greater than 90 degree and it is a case of non wetting fluid as as uh, it has been uh, shown over here that a liquid P is a non wetting fluid so we will analyze only in uh, liquid uh, A we will try to analyze the capillary rise only and in a similar fashion the capillary fall can be cal calculated so we will try to calculate this capillary rise so under equilibrium conditions you can see that the weight in the liquid level level above this column uh, will be there it will be equals to the tensile force in the vertical direction basically we have this the tensile effect which is being created and this tensile effect is being created on the periphery of uh, this liquid level which is having some diameter d or diameter of the tube so we will take into consideration the component component of the force which is in the vertical direction so uh, the component which will be in this direction will be given by sigma cos theta and the comp uh, sorry sin theta and the component which will be in the vertical direction if you will resolve the sigma it will be sigma cos of phi here it will be sigma sin phi it will be sigma cos phi in this direction so these uh, effect the force due to this will be balanced by the force due to the weight so under equilibrium conditions yes we can say sigma is a surface tension force pi d is basically the circumference on which this surface tension is acting cos phi is the component of the force in the vertical direction will be equals to mg mg is the weight of the liquid level weight of the liquid above this above this level weight of the liquid in this column so if you will uh, see it will remain same uh, mass is equals to volume into density rho vg it will be and v basically i'm talking about the volume which is the volume of the 
liquid level in this column liquid in this column so it is rho into pi by 4 d square into h pi by 4 d square is the area of this uh, tube and h is basically the capillary rise and g is acceleration due to gravity so if you will calculate and simplify and try to find out h you will get 4 sigma cos phi by rho g t so basically this will give you the capillary rise in this case so similarly we can find out for capillary fall that you can practice at your own in that case we have to find out the capillary fall and it will be in the negative direction a negative value will be there which certainly means that it is a capillary fall so capillary rise from this above equation we can see is inversely proportional to the diameter of the tube so the smaller diameter tube will have more capillary rise So these were the books which were consulted or referred uh, during this uh, uh, course of action. So uh, with this we came to know about what is a surface tension and capillarity. So I thank you very much for uh, watching this video on surface tension and capillarity. So uh, with this uh, the introduction part is over. So we are left with uh, few uh, numerical problems which will be which we will be discussing in our next uh, video and the numerical problems on uh, newton's law of viscosity and on capillarity and surface tension so i once again thank you very much uh, to you for watching this video so uh, the theoretical part of uh, the chapter one that is introduction is over with this video Thank you very much.